Oh, do you know it's going to be mistakes all the way around this morning? Uh, uh, honestly, I, I, the, uh, first of all, I haven't had time to go through apologies because I've been so tied up with these ends. I haven't honestly had time. But Kevin, um, Keith can't make it because he's away. I thought he said Q, but Barbara said he might not be. But he's away today. Um, so we haven't got. Uh, I can't. I can't remember the others. There was. There was a few, but I've been so tied up with these M's. On, honestly, I've never come across anything so messed up in all my life. Um, first of all, when I started doing the M's, you know I'm doing the British, British feebles. I started doing the M's, and they were in a bit of a state. They'd got the MCs mixed up with the MAK, MACs, and the, oh, that was a complete mess. And then I got a little further, and they started duplicating everything. And I've got to go through them all because sometimes you might have two names exactly the same but different people. So you've got to go through them all. So I, I had to go through all those a lot, and then I got through them. And the last thing is, um, whoever wrote the W O three four five stroke thirty six file only had five hundred odd people in the file, and I started writing it out, and I was so many names missing that was absolutely ridiculous. Um, and so I got near enough all the way through what I was doing, adding the names as I was going, so I had to go into another file to add them. And I got through, I got through to a certain point, and I thought, I just wonder if the cards are there. We, they aren't in the index, but are the cards there? This is, this is find my past. So I started going through the cards, and all the flipping cards are there. They hadn't indexed them. So they put the cards on the same as when they duplicated everything. They put the cards on one set of cards, but two indexes. And in this case, they put the cards on and no index. So you're looking for a name and you can't find it because they haven't put them. There's 2,000 in this file and there's only 500 indexed. They've made a complete mess of it. Honestly, and that's 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 now I'm now on it two weeks, and I've now got to go through. I'm now going through all the cards individually, and I've got to go through each one and add them individually. Two thousand odd. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. Whoever done it wants shooting. They're, they're <laughs> absolutely they're absolutely ridiculous. I mean, they just didn't know what they were doing. I thought it strange because when I did add all the names in the index, I came across this 35236 file, and they hadn't put the country of the file where the, where the file was actually made up, where, where the index card was made. And I thought that was strange because all the rest had done it. So I should think they've got one person doing it, and they, can, they didn't know what they were doing, and they made a complete mess of it. Anyway, so I'm, I, at the moment, I'm indexing it. So I've got to go through each card individually and index it and write all the information down because, of course, people can't find the information because they can't find the card. So it's a, it's a right mess. So that's, that's, that's my week, which has been a pain in the butt. <laughs> Ronnie, <laughs> when, when you've done this and sorted it all out um, mm. for our use, does that also alter the ones on... The, where you're looking at it, find my past, or, or is, uh, do they no. remain in a mess? They'll remain in a mess, you know. So, that's, uh, that's up yeah. to them. Yeah, um, but that's so sad because in the future, if people are looking, they're going yeah. to re find the same they, confusion. They won't be able to find anything. I mean, you're looking for a name. At first, I was having a hell of a lot of problems looking for the MCs because I had a lot of MCs, but they weren't in the other file. So I, I started I started thinking, well, this is strange. But when I got to the MACs, I found them. So then I had to go back and correct what I, I'd missed. And then when I got to the MACs, I had to then pull them out and put them in the MCs. Mm. Uh, 
uh, the right a right mess, honestly. Can you let um, them know that there's this confusion I, so I they think can I adjust will, it? I think I will let them know because uh, that's not helping people. No, but, absolutely. But what I'm doing at the moment is what I'm now doing the second run as well on the M on the M files because the second run uh, would have been um, adding the regiments and the units and if they died or survived. So I'm now doing that now in the M M's. So I'm doing it all in one because otherwise I won't be able to go back and find them because I've got to find the cards again. Um, so I'm, I'm now doing runs one and two and three, a part of three. So that's taken me a long time. I, uh, uh, it's frustrating, really frustrating because I was getting on really well and this has really holding me up. Um, I've now been two weeks on it and normally I, I'm about a week on one letter. So I'm, I've now been about two weeks and I think it's going to be about another week, maybe two, just sorting this out. But anyway, uh, that's been my week, which hasn't been very good. Got very frustrated, very irritable. Um, the weather doesn't help. <laughs> well, no, we're, we're home Ron, again because the weather was Ron, terrible. Ron, do you want to borrow this? Yeah, I, I might want something stronger. <laughs> that is strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Gillian might, I might ask Gillian to take me down the vets. I've had enough. <laughs> oh dear. That's the easiest way. No, no, honestly, the trouble is when you have something like this, your head is so full of trying to sort things out and other people start asking you questions and you've got to then leave this and go on to something else and, and I'm in a right mess. Um, but never mind, never mind, that's been my week. Not a very good week. And we've, we heard Bernard's week, who's on <laughs> four, four injections a day. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it just insulin? Yeah. Yeah. Insulin <laughs> for your diabetes. Yeah. And and the stab in my fingers all the time. My fingers yeah. now are just like leather pads. <laughs> oh dear. Mm. Oh dear. It comes right, to us uh, all. Yeah. Right, John, glad to see you, mate. I know you had trouble yeah, last time. Yes, I couldn't get in at all. It was, it was shocking, yeah. wasn't it? How did you do it in the end? Did you get rid of um, the the app and put it on again? I gave up. No, how I did you get on and, this and time? did something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I, I feel like 20... doing. <laughs> well, I did that, Ron. I... I took the app off and I re-downloaded it. Yeah. If, more if, than if, once. More yeah. than once. The, tr the trouble is, when they keep altering Windows, the app then doesn't work, so you have to get rid of the app and put it on again. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is as stupid, really, but, um, you know, it's the only way to get around it. No, there's no problem this morning. Just clicked on it, went straight through, no problem at all today. Yeah, and you didn't redo the app? No, no, no. I, well, prob probably I did so much last week, I gave up, took the yeah. dog out in the end. If you do have any of that trouble, just take take, uh, take the app off and then go in and put it on again. And right. you'll find that more than likely you'll cure it. That's, that's what's happened yeah. to mine. I've, I've had it happen a few times and I just take the app off and put it back on. That's just because they're all in Windows, and of course something in their their system is wrong. So anyway, we're we're there now. Thank, uh, uh, good. good to see you, John, and yeah. thanks for the book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us what book it was? It is <coughs> uh, Escape from the Japanese. It's by Ralph. <coughs> pardon me. It's by Ralph Burton Goodwin. He was a uh, uh, New Zealander, uh, yeah. he was in the Royal New Zealand Naval Volunteer Reserve. Uh, it, it's a story of escape from Hong Kong. Yeah. So um, he was an OBE after, so it's, it's quite an interesting book. 
brand new. There it is. I think you can see that. Yeah. See that? Oh yeah, that's great. That'd be great. Yeah. Now, what we said last time at the meeting, so I don't know if you looked at the video recording, John, is that um, that's either sending it to uh, Matt or holding on to it and we let you know uh, where to send it and we pay the postage. Yeah, that's the best way, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think I that's the best that. way. Yeah, mm. and then if you send it to the person, we give you the address. And then we'll send you the postage. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, so we have got another one, Matt. Did you you look you got that, didn't you, Matt? Can you hear us, Matt? No. Matt can't get us. Anyway, so yeah, we've we've got that book in line, and we've got another two from Sec. And uh, as we said last time. I've got in touch with Sec, and he's going to hold on to the books, because they're both his books he wrote, and he's holding on to the books, and we'll let him know who won the draw for the book when it, when it becomes available, and then he's going to sign it, and he's going to send it to the person. So that would be a nice little touch. Sec agrees, nice little touch. So the person will get the book. Uh, Best wishes to and their name from Sec who wrote it. So that that would be a nice little touch. Um, so that's three books we've got extra, Matt. Yeah, we can't hear you, Matt. No, we can't hear you at all. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, we've got you. Yeah, we've got you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. We've got so we've got, we've got another three books. Okay, the Good. one you just now saw from John. And I didn't see it, it honestly. <laughs> so. oh, can you just show us again, uh, jo just show us the book first. There it is. Right, escape. Oh, right, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, he, so that we've got that one as well, and we've got the two from SEC we talked about last time. So we've got yeah. another three books there. So we, we, we're going to definitely have enough for another year. Um, a bit unfortunate because, you know, we had so many people say they were going to join, and we've only had about five or six joined. Uh, oh. So it was a bit unfortunate. But I think if we get a video on, now we can do it different ways. Oh, Martin's here. Oh, Martin's here. Hey, yes. Where are you, Martin? I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Where, where are you? Where are you? Are you at home? Yeah, I'm at home. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Because you were in Thailand, weren't you? It was, yeah, yeah. Got back last week. Ah. Right. Did you get the wrong time as well? Yeah. I have smacked his hand, did. Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, Bernard and I had a chat about an hour ago. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I do apologise. That was my fault. Um, but I, I'll always put the meetings at ten. So bear that in mind. Yep. I, I, I made a mistake. I've, I've, I've just been going over. I've, I've had so many problems this week with the M's and getting them all done. I'm, I'm really, really up to my neck in it. Okay. And yeah, I, I, to be honest, I had to have a couple of days away from it. Because my head was, I felt, I, I felt myself going, you know, I, I, you know what it's like when you do too much. I felt myself getting that way. So I had to break off and have a couple of days. And what I did is I just did a, a few that I'd asked for information. So I just went back and done individual ones. And that, that I find that relaxing. I did a bit of woodwork, which I find relaxing. So... Um, so I just got away from it for a couple of days, and I think the same thing will have to apply now because I'm getting a bit with this now. Um, Barbara, did you want to do a piece on Facebook, or, or what? Yep, did you I'm want fine. To do? I'm prepared. You do. Yes. You're, yeah. you're prepared. Do you want to do it now? Well, whenever it works better, whether you want to do it at the end, and we'll catch up with um, everybody first. Yeah, we'll catch up first. So, uh, Matt, 
we haven't yeah. heard from Matt really yet. So, Matt, um, yeah, so you, you, we've, we've got plenty of books for the book club, or for yeah. the book draw. Yeah? Is that everyone? Yeah, so it looks like hopefully in July, is it July we'll be able to do the first one? Yeah. Yeah, that would be, uh, yeah, that would be the next meeting, which I think is on the second. So July, hang on. That would be the first Sunday. At 10 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't understand, he doesn't understand <laughs> the clock. No, no, yeah. no. It won't be the second of July. It'll be the... Uh, Seventh? Seventh, yeah. The seventh, seventh of July. That will be our first draw. And I have got some nice, um, I, have, I haven't put it on there, but I, I did try and I've got a nice little draw thing so we can do it online. Uh, I can put it online. <laughs> I can share it from my other computer and uh, I'll, I'll try and get it. Um, Come on, Martin. You have your say, and I'll try and find. <coughs> I'll try and find this draw thing. You have a okay. little talk, John. Uh, tell us how you got on in the island. Yeah, how yeah you um, <laughs> just got back um, um, on last Sunday. We had Jen and I went up to Thailand for a, for another couple of weeks of uh, a bit of R and R relaxation, plus a bit of um, exploring. Um, Various locations uh, up up country. Um, obviously, the the main topic area that we look at is up at Tarkanoon, and um, we spent um, about three days um, exploring the area again, um, which was uh, very rewarding. Again, um, we've actually now met the uh, landowners of um, the area where the 203 camp is. And it turns out that um, he actually owns all the land that runs all the way up from 203 camp to um, the bridge site where the Australian camp was. And then on the other side of the bridge, heading further north, his sister owns all of that land. So, um, this isn't it was the one really you had trouble with. Um, this, this is, yeah, this is the actual um, site we were on last year. And the one the, he wouldn't uh, let you have it go on. Well, his, that's right. His 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 work foreman um, actually asked us, to, uh, well, you know, ushered us to leave, um, and it turns out that um, they they actually thought that we were looking for Japanese gold, and uh, <laughs> so 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 wow. once, once so once they <laughs> actually realised that once they realised that no, there's no gold. Once they realised that we were legitimate and just wanted to, you know, look for POW camps and railway, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they were more than happy to, to let us come in. And um, the guy who owns the land is called Lek, and he's actually now um, um, uh, made himself pretty well known to Rod down at the railway centre, and he's been down there yesterday to, to have a look around the railway centre. So he's 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 been a great contact to, to um, <coughs> to get to know because. He said, oh, look, you know, any time you want to come back, he said, just ring me first. And, um, yeah, you, you're quite welcome to come and to come in and have a look or, or you know, arrange to what you want to do. Um, so that was really, really good. Um, so that was at the uh, 203 camp. So that was awesome to get in there and have a really, really, really good thorough look around. And um, we, uh, we didn't really find as much in there as we had expected, which was a bit of a shame. But then we went... Um, up to the Australian camp, to, to Pond's party camp with uh, with Rod, and that was really, really good. Um, and we actually, pretty sure now, we sort of know the pretty much the exact location where that, that camp was alongside the river. Um, and then we also had another um, day or two up at the uh, the base camp as well. And uh, we had a good um, good look around and a good dig. Um, we've, we've now found the... Um, the beach area where um, the Tarkanoon Pavilion would have been, where the concert parties took place. Um, so we got some great photos and a bit of video of that. Um, and also, also we found a cook area. And the reason we know it was a cook area because we actually found um, stones which had been placed uh, on top of the riverbank and 
when we uh, did a bit of metal detecting there, we found uh, lots of pieces of broken quaily, you know, the big, the big cast iron uh, cauldrons that they use for cooking. Um, so we was, found this is one. Is that what was in the pictures, Martin? Sorry to interrupt you, because I wondered yes, what those yes. fairly big pieces yeah, well that, were. Yeah, um, that, that's broken. That, that's 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 pieces of those great big massive cast iron oh, um, right. cauldron cauldrons. Yeah. That's so that's what they it. used for. Yeah, that's what they used for cooking. We found that everywhere, and it was all it was all over that that area. So we knew that we'd found the the, the cook place, you know, the cook area, mm. um, which was really overlooking the river, um, where down the embankment um, there's a, there is definitely a, a walk walkway down there, which is the, what the POWs would have used to bring supplies up, and it's the access down to the river where where the um, beach pavilion would have, and the concert parties would have taken place. So it was really good to get down there. It's not beach anymore. It's, um, it's only uh, washed over rock now because since they dammed the, um, the, the river, um, there's no silting anymore. It's, um, it's fresh water runs through the river daily when they release the, the water for the hydroelectric plant. So obviously all those embankments, have all, all, they're all washed clean now. So. But it's even, even so, it's, uh, it's still the, the same location. And you can see when you compare um, standing at that beach area and looking at the river bend and the, and the bluff on the, on the other side, it actually fits with um, Hardy's drawing in his book when he's, um, when he's sketched that exact same spot. So, you know, it's, it's really good to sort of sit them side by side and go, yeah, that's, that's exactly where that was. Um, outside of that, we, um, we, we also had a good look at um, some of the areas around Prankasi. Um, I've been studying a few aerial photos of Prankasi around the marshalling yards and, and some camp areas and some areas of the railway, and um, so um, and also some of the caves at Prankasi, where which um, um, Arthur Lane describes in some of his descriptions. Um, so yeah, we, we were up there with. Um, Rod and Andrew and the guys from the museum, and we we really had a good look around, and um, sort of were able to establish some of the where some of the features were, um, especially around the the marshalling yards, because it was quite a lot of infrastructure um, out there. So that was really good too. Um, time time of year, it was beginning of the monsoon, so it, it it was pretty good in terms of they've had a bit of rain, but it wasn't actually too bad at this point and so the ground was was fairly soft but then on the same token the uh, the jungle hasn't really grown back to any great extent at this point and the local farmers have done a lot of burning off and clearing some embankments so that's that was terrific too because you actually you, you know exposes some of the embankments so you can actually really have a good look at them um, so out, outside of that just um, yeah just lots of lots of uh, photographs lots of um, um, you know, putting putting bits and pieces together. Um, yes, yeah, so that was a really really good trip. Do the um, sorry, can I just ask? Do the bits that you find the the metal like from the pots? Do those then go back with Rod to the um, museum? Or? No, we 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 leave them out there because uh, okay. um, there's no point bringing bringing those bits and pieces in. Um, mm. Rod actually found some terrific torches, um, mm. you know, tor torches with batteries still in them. Wow. Um, yeah, which were some great pieces, and you know, mm -hmm. you know the, the, some of the tent pegs are really good as well because they're um, um, uh, really you know well intact in that, in that soil that up there because it's a it's a clay based soil, but it's because it's high on the on the embankment, um, it doesn't hold a lot of water and it drains quite frequently, you know. So the, the, some of the stuff you find up there is in really really good condition. Right. But it's yes, yeah, really, really good to actually sort of start now. What I'm working on now is actually um, um, mapping and documenting uh, where all these finds come from. So trying to put the camp together. Um, haven't really found the hospital area yet because you know, Tarkunu Base Camp was a big was a big camp, and it got split into two. Um, so still yet to sort of pinpoint exactly where the the hospital was located. Is this all going in uh, Rod's place? Um, yeah, look, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff has. Um, I found a, a, a fantastic little uh, um, enamel bowl with um, with like a rising sun or a sort of flower painted in the bottom of it, and and we found a nice cigarette case. And both those pieces are now in the museum um, in Thailand. Um, 
obviously some of the other bits and pieces are, are just you know they're stuff that you 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 just really examine and work out what it is you find a lot of rusty nails you find um battery you know bottoms of batteries and bits and pieces and you know some of the stuff is uh, is not what you'd probably exhibit but it's 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 information and it's it's stuff yeah. that you sort of catalog and and record right that, that's great i envy you i'd love to be there but there you go <laughs> anyway on the screen that's yes the, the draw thing that we we're talking about can you all see oh, it oh thank god for that look at my screen up and i thought i've got a virus or something <laughs> no, no. That's that's the actual draw thing we're going to use. Okay. All right, I've been trying um, to get rid of it because of what the hell? No, is no, no, no. And <laughs> if I go into settings, I've added most of the names. Okay, these are all the names of the charity members. I have got a few more to go on that have joined, but they're all the names. Um, and all you do is draw. So bear in mind, this is not the draw we're using for the first draw. This is just a trial. I'll say this. So if anyone's watching it on the video, they think we're drawn. This is not a draw. This is just a trial to show people what we're going to do. Um, then all I do is draw. And as Moo Mellows won the book. Okay? Did we all Very get good. that? Yep. So that, that would be Moo Mellows won the first book. But that is just a trial, so there isn't a book on on uh, on, draw, on on the draw. But that, that seems okay. Everyone yeah. okay with it? Yeah, and that's, that's do, excellent. It will put that on Facebook. So... I'll take that off now. Everyone's okay with that? Yeah, yeah. Really. Yep. yeah. I'll, st I'll take that off. Um, yeah, so we'll put that on Facebook and we'll put it on the Facebook normal page, which is now we're up to 780 members. So we're, we're getting, bearing in mind that the FIPO community we thought did really well and we only had 750. So we've got. 780, so we're, we're further ahead than we were on the FIBO community now. Um, so this will go on the FIBO, normal FIBO pages, and so this will try and get people to see what we're doing, and that's worth coming in to get a draw, and you know. And what I'll do with your, if, if, when you do your little bit, Barbara, I might add a bit on to the end of just little snippets like uh, Martin's little bit he did there. If we add that on the end, people can see we talk about research. Is that okay, Barbara? That's fine, yeah, fine. Yeah, because I, I think we've got to show people, you know, what we're talking about, yeah, <laughs> at the meetings. And that was good, Martin. That was really good. So that would, that would be a lovely little thing on the end. Um, Yep. If anyone else would like to do a bit, like I know, I know Kevin does a lot of research. I mean, if Kevin wants to do a little bit, then we can, I can splice them together so we can have a little bit after Barbara's bit. Do you yeah, want to sure. do a little bit, Kevin? Uh, yeah. You've been researching this week, so yeah, I'll leave it to you. That's up to you, mate. Do you want to do a little bit there? Yeah, yeah, well, this this week, Ronnie, I've been uh, I've been going through that uh, list that you sent me of the uh, repatriation ships. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's really interesting. That's that's. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to go through, obviously. Uh, yeah. Go through all the names, but the trouble is, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if you happens to yourself. You're looking at something, and something distracts you. Yeah. You get a name, and you think, well, wait a minute, that was something. Uh, and of course, I, I, I don't know if I, I, I mentioned it. My, my uncle was in the in Northumberland, Royal Northumberland Fusiliers, yeah. and uh, a lot of his men were actually coming back on some of these ships. So that like sort of sidetracked as you think, oh, eh, but I'm making yeah. note. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I mean, uh, think you think about it. There's all them names. Every name's got a story. All, all them yeah. men have had a story. Yeah. And I think it's a shame it's impossible. 
to get every single name and have a put the story behind it. But uh, yeah. it's it's interesting. But as I say, it's so sidetracking. You look at that sort of stuff. Uh, but as I say, I'm, I'm still going through that list. So that's that's what I'll be doing for the next that, few weeks. That's the same as me, Kevin. I'm you know when I'm doing this um, British people's thing, I'm going through it and I'm thinking. I wish I knew his story. I wish I knew his yes. story. And 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 you're, and funny enough, in the first two ones I did on the British people, um, the the British people role, there was a lot of Royal Northumberlands in there, uh, and a lot of them died. But since that first, I think it was the A's and the B's, I haven't come across so many, and it's ever so strange because you get one letter. And you'll find, like the Sherwood Foresters, you'll find a load of them together who died. So I don't know what went on, but you tend to get a certain, like an A or B, <clears throat> and after that you get a few of one regiment all dying at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's really strange. It's, it's really strange. Yeah. There's got to be some to pattern S&Ks. behind it somewhere. There's got to be some pattern. Um, yeah. But what I find, uh, one of the things I find really good is when you're, you're doing that sort of stuff, you'll find a, um, you'll find a name. Uh, like I've, I've been doing stuff in my the father's company, and uh, there was some of them were on the St. Martin Railway. And um, Lizzie Oliver's got a website, it's, uh, and she has a role of, uh, of the men that were working on the St. Martin website. So it's nice to find... You've got the name of a person on a on a your roll call, but you can also mm-hmm. cross reference it to somebody else's roll call, which is is that's good. It like ties all the ends together. Yeah, when I, when I was doing uh, the L or the yeah, that was the L's. I come across Arthur Lane, and I was just picturing his books. <laughs> he, uh, kept, he used to send me all his books because you know I I I did write his Nessa site for a little while. And he kept on sending me all his books, and uh, and it's ever so strange because you think, when did he send me that book? And then I go and get the book out, and I'm distracted, so I'm I'm getting the book out to have a read of that, and then I've lost where I was, and you have to find your way back in again. But um, you know, that's ever so strange because you come across the name, you're writing all the names down, you know, for the role, and I've done that one, and. and <coughs> The name rings a bell, and you remember you did it about a couple of years ago. You added it into the uh, uh, site memorial, um, and oh, as, as really is strange. That uh, I've found. I don't know if um, if when you have gone into the index cards, if you have found the same thing. But I always thought the red line, but now I've found you get a D. On over to one side, and that means they died with no red line. And you might not have a red line or a D, and in where that says captured, they've put in there died on, they've crossed out and put died on, so that's another thing. So you've got a red line, you've got a D, and you've got died on. And then some of them, when you look on the back of the card, because I look on the back of the card to see if they were signed off as a survivor and some of them haven't got no signed off they've got just two lines of japanese writing and when you go into that you'll find they died so there's no there's no pattern to those cards which we thought we had they're all over the place so yeah although that might not have anything on the front of the card to say they died they might have died and not been registered on the card with a red line so yeah. that's, that's, that's really strange. But anyway, uh, <coughs> that Martin and uh, uh, Kevin. So we've got <coughs> Kevin and, and Martin. John, have you done anything this no, lately? No, <coughs> no, not much lately. Played a bit of golf lately. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, we know about Bernard. <laughs> Don't we, Bernard? <laughs> we know about Bernard having to go up here small and for mate putting the wrong time down. Come on, I'll put it on so you've got it on record that I put the wrong time down. 
Tell him, Martin. Tell him, Martin. There was only you and me there. There was. There was. <laughs> yeah, but and we had. We, we, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Martin. Go on. <laughs> no, we just uh, we had a little natter and we. Uh, we, we conferred over breakfast and um, decided that we'd come back on later on. His but, breakfast but is about four o'clock, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do we agree, Martin, that Bernard was the only one on at nine o'clock? Nine oh, he o'clock. was, yes. Yeah, because yours wasn't he nine was. o'clock, was it? What time were you? I, I, yeah, I came, I came on. Bernard was first. Yeah, but what time were you in Australia? Four oh, four o'clock. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Yes. So Bernard, yes. you're the only one on at nine o'clock, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I got up early for that. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, Matt, have you had anything happen this week? Uh, really, the last two uh, weeks. Uh, I've been doing research with people who's, who they've logged on to the uh, Burma site, and they said, oh, my, my granddad or my dad or my fought in there, uh, do you know anything of him? And I'm going, he's, you know, like, his name was John Smith. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, do you know anything about him? I know nothing about him. Do you got his date yeah. of birth? Yeah. Or, I think it was 1920 or it might have been 19. And I'm going, oh, God. I've managed to find out a few for them. Um, one is, all she knew was her grandfather was a captain, and he may have been with the in the tenth Gloucesters, but she didn't know. She wasn't sure, um, and I managed to find out. And I looked for captains at first, and I found out he actually was a, a private. Had been awarded the military medal, uh, not for action in Burma, for actions at uh, uh, Dunkirk in that time, BF. Uh, but he wasn't awarded until 1947 when he came back from Burma because they'd gone, they'd been evacuated from Dunkirk and swiftly been sent overseas to India and they, hence the, the, therefore they crept into Burma. Uh, but uh, I know you're aware, Ronnie, of the uh, BJ Day um, uh, uh, website to promote. I mean, it's, uh, I have no objection with them making uh, D Day a public holiday. Fair enough, it was an important part for Europe, but I've, in the last couple of weeks, with all the hype about D Day, I myself and a few others have been increasingly alarmed at the fact that they, they again, the, the, the downplay of the war in Southeast Asia's regions. Mm. It's like it didn't exist. And a lot of people don't know that, what went on. Because, especially in Britain, I mean, in America they do tend to make a big deal, and in Australia. But in Britain, we've always had, since that time, of yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the war finished in 1945. Yeah, we know. No, it didn't finish when you say it finished. It took about six months later, five months later. I mean, they were still fighting into, in some places into October, but it, it was agreed the official day would be the 15th of August. Mm. That's the official ending of the war. And so I've had a lot of people with that, and we're trying to get a petition going to make it a uh, public holiday on that date. Uh, I've been doing quite a bit with that. Uh, I've had a few positive re- replies. I've been, I live in an area where unfortunately it's mostly Muslim, RMP, I'm the wrong colour, wrong religion. And it's as corrupt as anything, his whole family is, and it's well known around here. So I've not got no, no, no joy from my local MP or councillors or anything to try and push it. But I've contacted various television people and that, and I hope that uh, we can get this, uh, uh, if not recognised and made, at least spoken about. 
Uh, so I've been doing that basically for the last couple of weeks. And we, uh, yeah, you, you know, we, you know, I signed a petition as well, but I mean, you, we did start off um, in the FIPO community. We had quite a few FIPOs in it. And, yeah, um, on FIPO we, Day, which is again to yeah, FIPO. We, we got talking about it and, and the FIPOs actually picked out that we left it to the FIPOs. Uh, they picked out August the 15th was just the first day they could actually relax and look back on what happened to their mates. That's what they said, and we went along with that, and they wanted to call it FIPO Day, so we went along with that. So the FIPOs actually did pick the date, and they picked the day. Um, but you were talking about... Uh, you know, when the war ended, and I came across one card, and they died oh, as a fee pool. Go. Hang on a minute. Yeah, they, they died as a fee pool, and they died 1945, the 22nd of September, and they actually died as a fee pool, um, which was really... I mean, it, it makes you think, you know, I know I know most of the surrender things were signed the 2nd of, of, um, of September, but um, the Feebles did want that date. But when you think someone as a Feeble died the 22nd, and there was a big thing in, someone put it on Facebook, I think, that uh, they actually... After the surrender had been given out on the radio, the Japanese took, I think it was 25, into the jungle and shot them. You know, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You just can't comprehend what actually went on at the end. It, and, and, you know, the, the plane that crashed from Sigon to go and take the first lot of of uh, seriously injured or seriously ill POWs to Rangoon hospital actually crashed and the whole lot died it's gone through all that and then and 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 Bernard's dad dying on the way home I mean you're going through all this and you think they went through hell for three and a half years and then just to die at the end, that's horrible. That really is horrible. Uh, but anyway, we, we, we've, we've, uh, we've gone through that. Um, yeah, so, so I th have we cut, Barbara, did you want to talk about, I know we've been so all signing this petition. Did you yeah, want can to I talk say about something that? about, yeah. can I talk about, well, I'll talk about the last week because um, it's been quite yeah. a busy week. Week. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, I'll talk about the VJ petition in a moment. Um, on Tuesday, we went as a group to RAF Cosford. Our honorary chairman is 96-year-old Ron Mockford, um, with quite a history. Very humble, full of humility, doesn't want any fuss. But we, we went because he was repatriated there to RAF Cosford. Um, and it seemed appropriate for us to do a day trip, despite the weather. So we took him there and um, we went round. There was a kamikaze Japanese plane there. There was one that went with a missile at the front of it. You know, oh, it was it was not just English planes. There were German planes and Japanese ones. We had guided tours. We split into two groups and went round. And I'd actually specifically asked them to concentrate on World War Two. The one thing that our guide didn't show us, but I managed to spot, it was the fact that I recognised Changi in the distance on the wall and went over and looked. And it was about Changi um, and it was about Rapwe, all of that, what happened. And then it showed where the um, soldiers were actually um, billeted when they went back to RAF Cosford. Um, so it was really interesting. Our um, FIPO hero, uh, Ron, um, he's just given up cycling every day a few weeks ago. He can't manage that now. Um, and we thought he's not going to do a three-hour walk. 
So um, I hired a, a mobility scooter for him and he was as if he'd been given a Ferrari, off he went. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was lovely. And that to me is what I get from being part of this group, from part of everything I do, is to see these, what are left of these men, what they went through, and, and to do as much as I can to get them remembered. So BJ petition, I signed it a few months ago and then it went sort of quiet. And now, of course, it's coming up to the time limit that we've got to get 10,000 on the petition. It was sparked off again very much by um, what you were saying, Kevin, that um, D-Day is going to get um, the uh, May bank holiday reorganised for it. Why can't we get the August bank holiday reorganised for VJ Day? They deserve it. So, yeah, done quite a lot. Talked to people from West Midlands News this week. Going to get Ron perhaps interviewed by them to go on the television. And then either myself or Keith may be doing um, an interview on the radio about it. I'm hoping it's Keith. He's got the knowledge. I've just got the passion. Mm. Um, interestingly, while we've been talking, I got out because this was part of what I was going to do. I was looking through because this is the book that applies to my dad, the prisoners list. Yeah. Yeah. got various pages that I've got things on, but I just found this bit, which might be of interest. And this is what um, um, Uncle Bill, or General Slim, as he was uh, really known, what he told them when they went back. When you go home, don't worry about what to tell your loved ones and friends about service in Asia. No one will know where you were or what it is if you do. You are and will remain the forgotten army. We have to do something about that, don't we? Starting with this, the art of captivity. I'm hoping that we get a lot of public support for that, to go and see that. And um, Meg Parks, bless her, very busy, um, is still trying to get a special weekend for as many of us to go, to have talks, to go and watch the film, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, at the um, Liverpool Philharmonic Hall. You can't book think? us yet. Yeah, it really? isn't on this. Yeah, it is. I've lent Keith my copy of it. Um, it's it's worth watching and then going to watch it perhaps there where we can all talk about it afterwards. So it's been quite a busy week. You know, I, I know what you meant about overload because I've been on to the FIPO, um, sorry, the, the Facebook site all the time watching what's coming on. Because I've been in touch with the British Legion um, about their proposals for next year a few weeks ago and found that, oh, yes, D-Day, we're doing this, that and the other. I contacted them again. Um, twice I've been in touch with them this week with a promise that they will do something for BJ Day. So, remains to be seen. So, it's been quite yeah. a busy day, uh, week rather, yeah. and day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when so, we, that, that's been there. Yeah. When they originally started, they did get in touch and I did put the name down at the beginning, but I did explain to them that we'd done it. And when we sent our petition in, uh, which included a lot of feebles, a lot of the feebles actually signed it. Um, they said we couldn't have that day because that was VJ day. So we couldn't use the feeble, feeble day because as that was feeble, as that as VJ Day, they wouldn't accept that. So um, what you see, I got a lot of the pins made with Michael Hurst, who was, I was quite friendly with in, you know, Taiwan, um, their memorial site. He he actually has got a, a a business there making pins. So he actually did all my pins for me, and so I I order them from Michael Hurst in Taiwan. Um, and we actually did push it quite a bit, but you know what we said we'd do instead because the government refused to to accept it as as a uh, recognised day. We said we'd hold it as an unofficial day, and that's what we've we've done. We've we've always said that's people day, and we we just we just. Have a, I don't go to any gatherings now. I did the first two, but I don't do them anymore. Um, but what I did is I sent it out to all the associations that were in to do with FIPO. And I got some positive response, but 
one lady got in touch and said, you're not big enough to do it. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't back it at all. I think you all know who I'm talking about, uh, a certain lady. Um, but no, I, I mean, no, I, th I think there's more interaction between the associations now. And we seem to be getting on, I get on a lot better with queer people than I did. Um, and and I, I think things are moving in the right direction. I just, I just myself, I, I just wish that we could get together on research more so we knew what everybody else was doing. Um, you know, so we don't overlap because, I, you know, I was spending loads and loads of time on, on this people and I'd really be really annoyed if after a year somebody else has done the same thing because we've just overlapped what we're doing. Um, and it's wasting my time and the other person's time as well. I, I just wish we knew what we were all doing so we wouldn't overlap each other. Um, but that's one of those things I don't think we'll ever get there with it. But um, anyway, uh, yeah. So the feeble thing, if you haven't signed it, the, 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 I call it feeble day. If you haven't signed the petition, please sign it. We, we want as many signatures on as possible and try and help get a day for the feebles um, or for all the Far East because as we said uh, for feeble day that doesn't include just the personnel, the feeble personnel, whatever nation, it includes all the uh, civilians who were in turn. So that, that's just not for, just not for um, uh, the service personnel. Um, and it's very strange because I, I keep finding loads and loads of civilians on these cards and a lot of civilians did come off the boots, uh, particularly Hong Kong. Um, in the Indian Ocean, there are a lot of them captured in the Indian Ocean, but um, Nankin and Wellston, there's a load of them captured, but uh, Hong Kong, I, I, Tony Bannon would really give us a good insight into Hong Kong, because I mean, he his books and everything, but uh, when, when you look at the cards and you can see what service personnel we had in Hong Kong, most of them were Hong Kong volunteer force, defence force, uh, defence force. So they they didn't really have strength. That's why the Japanese just went th straight through it. I mean, at least in Singapore and Malaya, we did have a force, and and Java, we had, we had a force there as well. But Hong Kong, you look at it, and you think, you know, what were we trying to do in Hong Kong? I mean, we didn't have any force there. You know, it's uh, most of them were, as I said, volunteers, and they were either bankers or whatever, uh, groceries, butchers. <laughs> They didn't have any military experience, so the, the Japs just walked through, didn't they? Anyway, um, do we want to do your bit now, Barbara? I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, are, are we ready? I uh, do. Can everyone? I don't want to switch off mics, but can we just let Barbara do the bit? And at the when you finish your bit, Barbara, if you say over to Ron and then. I'll, I'll shut it down, but that's going to take me a little while to get it sort of set up. So, because it's the first time I've really set it up. So, if you just hang on. Right, I, th I 
I think you could be there, Barbara. Okay. Hi. Oh, just, name... just a moment. Just a moment, Barbara. I've got mm -hmm. Google Live come up. We're now going to do it. Right. You're there. Hi, my name's Barbara, and I'm a member of the, the FIPO community. And I actually joined up with the FIPO charity side of this so that I could learn more about what happened in the Far East during World War II. Why did I do it? It was for my dad. Here's my dad. Hope you can see him. His name was Eric Taylor. He was captured in Singapore on February the 17th, apparently, according to his Japanese index cards. And then a few weeks later, he was moved out to Saigon. I didn't realize this when I was a child. You know, to me, he was my dad. Most dads, I presumed, called out in the night because they've got malaria or bad dreams. And that was just my dad and I loved him to bits. Unfortunately, he died in 1990 and he'd never spoken to me about really what happened. I get very emotional, excuse me. So around 2007, I'd got time then, my family was growing up and I was growing up to start looking into what happened to him. And I was very fortunate. I met some amazing people who helped me, particularly people like Jean and Frank, who had parents and fathers in them. Saigon too. Then as time went on and um, I'd finished doing what I, I wanted to find out about my father mostly, I looked about what happened out there to other people's fathers and further afield from Singapore to Japan to Hong Kong, all these sort of places, and realised what an enormous amount of history we never learn about in this country. Eventually, having uh, seen Ron's site and, and realising that Ron was spending an awful lot of time and his own money um, recording all these things, that I became aware that Ron wanted to uh, make sure that all his research was passed on so that future generations could benefit from his work. This isn't cheap. These domains cost a lot of money to run. We're all growing a bit older and we're becoming pensioners. So the cost shouldn't just be borne by one or two people. So Ron opened this up for members to join. And initially the cost was £25. We're hoping now that we'll get more of you to come and join us. And Ron is hoping that the cost will reduce to £12.50. And to the first 60 members who join, you also get a free uh, Keep the Candle Burning pin. So there's an incentive, get on and join us. So what happens? Uh, every month we do a video recording, sometimes it's twice a month. And if you haven't already watched this, I'll, I'll tell you basically what happens. The usual suspects that um, join us on here are Ronnie himself, who runs the site. Keith Andrews, who's well known to many of you for his research. These are two our, our main two researchers. Then we also get people like Martin Fryer coming along. He joins us all the way from Australia at Ungodly Hours. And you may have seen him on Facebook. He does some um, research trying to locate where the actual camps and things were. And he's written an amazing book about the, um, um, the time over there. The, um, my, gosh, my memory goes, the <laughs> uh, Beds and Hurts, uh, 5th Battalion of the Beds and Hurts um, in the jungle. Um, Ray Withnall, who isn't with us today on this recording, um, he also does a lot of work out in Ubon. Then we've got Bernard. Bernard Stogden, and I'm sure is all known to you. On one of our videos, we also did this. This was where Bernard's father actually made this cross. It's amazing. And if you've been out to Changi, which unfortunately is closed at the moment, you will have seen a Changi cross there that Bernard's dad made. And this book is the book that was written by Louise Cordingly. And she came on and talked to us about that book on one of our um, video recordings, which was so interesting. Then we've got the people who just do research on their dads as well, like Kevin. He's trying to work out how long and why it took his dad to become home when he was released. And we've got John Moses who comes too. And he also has been researching his dad's history. And just recently, we've had Matt joining us, Matt Stannard, whose idea it is to do the book club. And he's got quite a few books. We've now got enough books now to do 12 months worth of the draw. We did a trial on that today to see if it would work and that's all set now. Then there's me. 
I'm just Barbara and I'm here to do the remembrance side of this sort of thing. My dad meant a lot to me and I think in his honour that's why I do this and do everything else that I can. I'm also the secretary for the Birmingham Association of FIPO. This was at one time just the FIPOs doing that. Now it's the descendants of the FIPOs and we want to keep their story alive. It's very important. It mustn't be forgotten. So that really is what I'd like to say. I've got a lot from this group. There's, oh, there is one more thing. We're all very friendly and you know everybody is welcomed. <laughs> The one great thing about being the descendant of a FIPO is that when we get together, nothing matters just to remember and talk about what these wonderful men did, how strong they were. I don't know if you can call them brave. I don't know if you can call them heroes, but what courage they showed to, to go through what they went through. So hope you'll join me. Look forward to seeing you all. I'm going to pass you over to Ronnie now. OK, bye. Thanks, Barbara. That was that was really good. Yeah, we'll we'll all remember them as my dad, my hero. Thanks, Barbara. Yes, that's brilliant. It was good. And quite entertaining. Well done, Barbara. That was uh, that I hope was that really was what good. you wanted. That was really good. Yes. You've got you've got the best voice for it. I mean, you've got a voice we don't mind listening to. Oh, I don't know that, about that. that. Yeah, My husband it. doesn't say that. He never listens to <laughs> no, it. No, <laughs> no. I've, I've been looking at on um, on the on the webs on the uh, uh, Facebook, and that looks quite good. So uh, hopefully, hopefully people have seen it. Ray has commented on it. Mervyn Stone says he wants to join straight away underneath, which is good, Barbara. Yep. So um, we have got um, we have got some quick reaction there. Um, yeah. So so that looks really good. I'll have to have a look to see if people can replay the whole thing. If they can't, what I'll do is I'll use the recording and I'll put it on. So people can watch it with a little bits of Martin and and um, Kevin talking afterwards and and Matt. So we get a little bit going through. I might put a little bit of myself on as well. Bernard, yes, we'll put a little bit of Bernard. We've got to have Bernard on, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> and John, uh, that that was really good. Uh, I think we've had a very good meeting, everyone. Yes, uh, very good. I've got a little yeah. bit of work to do in getting this sorted out. Hopefully, I, I honestly, I you know how much I appreciate all of what you've done to keep the sites live and and help me, and I do appreciate it. This isn't to to get rid of you, the people that helped right from the word go. This is to make it easier. I thought twelve pound fifty. Make it easy for all of you. Instead of paying twenty-five pounds, you'll be paying twelve pound fifty. That's the only reason I'm doing it. Um, I do appreciate everyone what you've all done. Okay, so thank thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Ronnie. Can I just um, can I just let you tell? I don't know why. I want to say tell you a story. I was arguing with my mother, who's in her nineties, bless her. And lived through World War Two. Uh, obviously, married my dad after the war in 1949, 1940. I can't remember now. Um, he, we were talking, and she was. I was my her sister, my aunt. And she has a a meal on the 15th of August. And we were talking, and she was saying how wonderful the D-Day things have been, marking the end of the war, and uh, oh la, and I said, no, it wasn't to mark the end of the war, it was to celebrate the invasion of, of Normandy, the war didn't finish till 1945, round about the end of September. She said, what are you talking about? I was there, not you, <laughs> the war finished 
<laughs> the war finished in 1944. <laughs> I said, no, it didn't, Mum. It did. The invasion, D-Day, took place in 1943, and it was finished by, by May 1944. I said, well, how does it explain that your husband, my father, didn't come back to this country until 1946 then, and he was fighting in Burma? All that war was nothing to do with us. <laughs> that, that was purely American war. It didn't to do with and nobody. He said, he said, he said as advisor, and they went, <clears throat> well, why do you think he's to scream at night? Oh, it's just because he caught malaria and he's out there. Well, the, the Japanese war was uh, against America, fair enough, but that was a bit further south, and Burma and India, the Japanese, the Burma and India. And the words were, look, I don't know where you're getting this information from, it's all wrong, you know. The war finished in 1944. We didn't fight any Japanese. I said, well, how come the atomic bomb was was dropped until uh, 1945? And she said, but that that was just, just the the Americans and the Japanese. It had nothing to do with us whatsoever. I said, okay, I can't argue with you. Good to you. You were there. You know the war finished in 1944, yeah. and that's it lived through it. And I, I, it, it amazed me that just married with dad has obviously been through the war and in the Far East. He didn't fight in Europe at all after 1941. They were shipped off, and he, he knew about his nightmares and te night terrors and all the rest of it and all the different wounds he got. He must have done. But now it seems as if she's going out to close that bit of her mind altogether. So, I wonder oh, yeah, how yeah. many other people are under that impression as well that the Japanese war, because I suppose since the 1950s, all films about Burma have been American. We're Americans, we're great, we won the war. Yeah. And a lot of Americans did make a big deal of it. but And they didn't tend to mention Burma or India except in passing. Oh, on our way through India and Burma to get to so and so. Oh, okay. I just wonder how many other yeah. people is, is it found it easy just to go? That didn't happen. Our war, because yeah. we were in Europe, ended in 1944. I, I think, Matt, that our fathers had a lot to do with it because um, Mum told us at a young age not to even talk about the war. We were told not to mention the war to dad. Um, and I know dad used to go in his moods. He used to go right moody and she used to tell us to keep out of his way. Um, the only way, reason, yeah, I think the only way dad, mum knew about what happened is because we used to go around my uncle Jack's who was a POW with my dad. And they, they did used to talk about different things, not the bad bits, they didn't talk about that. The comradeship, they did talk about. Um, so then, if, if the wife wasn't, you know, the man was told to get on with life, forget about the war, and they just didn't talk about it. Dad didn't talk about it. You know, I mean, he, I, he, he wouldn't mention it. I, I suppose, in a way, it's unlucky or lucky. We never, it's never discussed in my house, our household, when I was a child, because, well, I mean, it's, it'll be just before I left home, 16, that my dad wasn't traveling. It was always away. I mean, I've got letters going back for my 11th, my 12th, my 13th birthday, 14th birthday written by my father in various hotels around the world where he was work, travelling for work. Uh, he's very rarely at home, so I suppose we didn't get... I mean, my grandfather never spoke about the, the World War One that they'd been in and wounded. Uh, actually, what killed my father's father was Chapnel from World War One. Um so I suppose, and when he came back, when I didn't think leave home, I really had nothing to do with him for a couple of years, just occasionally go home and leave or whatever. 
and we never talk about it until he he died and then he started to try and tell and that's what started me looking in can i actually said to my sister what is, do you know what, grand, what that did in the war because you know my kids have asked and no just know he fought in the war and he, I, he, I said well yeah i knew he was in burma and that's what started me on the trail of finding out and, and, and i found that's a lot I, but I it, think, it just uh, surprised yeah. me with my mum's attitude. I wonder if that was yeah. prevalent along a lot of people. I, I think the 1960s did it for me because, I mean, luckily, or unluckily, Van der Bom came along and I, I was a great follower of Van der Bom. And my dad didn't say anything to me. He just brought me, he gave it to me. I can remember him giving it to me. Uh, his diary he wrote on the way home and he said you ought to read this boy and that's really the first time I knew he was a Japanese POW but I didn't know anything about it and in the 1960s that's the first time I really got an insight into what dad had been through uh, because he wrote that to my mum he used to call my mum Snip and he wrote it to Snip and uh, he didn't say the bad bits. He just wrote it as a diary, which is on the web, most of it, on his story. And uh, I began to find out bits and pieces. And at the end, uh, or near the end, he said the Japanese had dug a trench all the way around their camp in Saigon. Right. And the POWs knew what the trench was for. The, they knew what the trench was for. They knew yeah, that, that, that. Was the, that was going to be their, their burial. Um, and that really made me open my eyes to the bomb. Um, without the bomb, they wouldn't have made it. Do I agree with the bomb? No, I don't agree you drop bombs on women and children, but it did end the war and it did get dad home. If dad hadn't, if the bomb hadn't been dropped, I wouldn't be here because I was born January 1947. Um, a little bit, Dad always called me Sunshine. That was, he never called me Ron, that was always Sunshine. And it weren't until later on in life I realised why he called me Sunshine. Because I was his Sunshine after the war. I was born just after the war. So that made sense. And, and it weren't until I started getting older, things started to fall into place. What, what had happened when I was younger, the screams in the night, the walk on the floor, he used to walk the floor. Sometimes when I went in their bedroom, he was laying on the floor, he wouldn't be on the bed. Um, he, 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 try, he used to try, he used to try turn and taps more than once to make sure they were off. Doors always had to be shut and then opened and shut again. Um, you know, that was dad. Uh, but I just thought that was normal. I just thought that was normal way of life. Yeah, I, I think it was normal. <laughs> yeah, until I got in my teens and met other people's family, particularly you know, girlfriends, I used to go around theirs and uh, meet their mums and dads, and I realised I had to change because I used to turn taps twice because I thought it was normal. I used to try doors twice because I just thought that was a normal thing to do. Uh, some of the things I still haven't got rid of that dad used to do. Um, I, I can't leave anything on my place. You know, I find no, it really hard no, not to eat yeah. everything. Ah. Because my dad always used to say, eat yeah. everything because you never know. I've, yeah. I've just got here in the book, actually, that the, the Japanese order, it says uh, about the prisoners, because I, I, I know one thing that my dad did tell my mum was that they'd had to dig, dig the trenches around Saigon for burial. And he says, um, the Japanese order was that whether they are destroyed individually or in groups, or however it is done, with mass bombing, poisonous smoke, poisons, drowning, decapitation, or whatever, dispose of them as the situation dictates. In any case, it is the aim not to allow the escape of a single one, to annihilate them all, and not to leave any traces. Mm. And that was mm. um, what the Japanese orders were. I think mm. our dads, Ronnie, um, they'd got the guns lined up to shoot them. In the yeah. Yeah, side and, on the, and the corners of the uh, trenches. Yeah, yeah. and then they were to fall in. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, that was um, 
Yeah. I I understand now, Dad, what Dad went through, and I understand, you know, what all our dads went through, and and you know why some families. I mean, I've been in touch with some families, and the children used to be knocked about a lot. And it only comes from the war, because they were knocked about, and when they came home, they knocked the kids about. Um, but my dad was completely opposite. He wouldn't lay a hand on us. You know, we that was up to mum to correct us. We weren't. Dad never corrected us at all. I found um, it exactly the same. Yeah. My father yeah, was. Exactly. A, everybody loved for dad. He was so fair, so yeah. even, and yeah. he he wouldn't lose. He, I, I, Maybe twice in all my life I've seen him lose his temper, and it was a, a no, and you think how can he be so placid and just put up with whatever's going on? And suddenly, and when he lost his temper, boy, did he lose his temper? Didn't turn mm-hmm. violent, but he knew how to really tear yeah. people to shreds with his, his you know, his verbosity. Yeah. Um, but again, like yourself, it was never discussed. I actually found out again in the. 60s from a fellow um, I say, shoot, a fellow shooter I met at the shooting range who'd been a prisoner of war uh, in, in Japan he'd been in the steel foundry and he was he used to tell me stories so I, yeah, I was working with a guy he, he dropped something and that thing he was just pushed into the old metal uh, as a punishment, and he went forever. He said it was, it was terrible, and that's why he I mean, never worked after the war. But, but when he, and I was like, oh, really? I don't know. And I told my father, and my father went, Yeah, I, I don't know, Frank. Oh, you know him? And he never told me, he knew who I was shooting with. And it was only that that started to be asking questions, which my father refused to answer. And it was all put away till after he died. And uh, there we go. Mm. So, uh, anyway, and I've done my waffle as usual. Yeah, it's no, that's, 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 that's been terrific. We've, we've had a good talk with, you know, that has been a good meeting. You all agree? Uh, yep. Yes. Yeah, that has been a good meeting. Um, what they went through, I mean, I, I, I stopped asking people to read it but we all know what they went through and we we all re- we remember them i mean we don't through, need... that, that's the reason why we're all here yeah it's because right. yeah. Uh, for whatever reason um we there not well for others as well but mainly we're all here for the same reason we, we started on this journey to find out about our fathers or our uncles or whatever grandfathers and it expanded and boy, does it, it, it expanded to a, I never thought, I mean, I've got, I've got my room, which is at the moment, because my son, but he's not here at the moment, he's gone back to Brunei. This is normally my office, it's full of files on, not just fee pals, prison camps and hell ships, but also on the regiments and everything. And, I've stuff I gathered over the years trying to glean bits of information like my dad was with this party and what actions were they in. <clears throat> Still, I find out more, which is what we're doing, I think, all of us. I think we need to yeah. encourage the younger people to come and join yeah. us, and not to remember them, but to also enlighten them. I, I honestly think these these meetings are good. I, I think that bring that helps me. Because I I can talk about it to people. You know, you know, you all know I don't go to meetings. I, I my dad was quiet. My dad was yeah. moody. My dad never lost his cool. The only time I know when he lost his cool is when he went within himself. And I tend to do that. I do exactly the same thing. If something upsets me, you'll find that I'll go in myself and I I'll stay out of it for a little while. Um, that's how, that's how I was brought up. That's how Dad reacted, and you, you they pass it on. Um, but anyway, that's been a great meeting. Let's finish it there. I'll stop the record.